Hello and welcome. My name is Jeff from Finally Learn. Today we're talking about accounting for inventory. We're going to estimate inventory using the gross profit method and the retail method. But first, let's talk about uh, the idea of profit or uh, markup. Sometimes it's kind of confusing, so let's just do a couple of simple little problems where we understand what's going on. Now, profit can be measured on cost or profit can be measured on the sales price. Or we can sometimes call it markup. So markup on cost or markup on the selling price. So if the markup is on the selling price, then you set sales to 100% and then you calculate everything based on that. If it's on cost, then set cost at 100% and then divide it out. And remember that anytime we have on the same line, uh, the, the percent on the same line, we divide that number by its percent, we get the 100% line number. So that may be confusing. So let's do a couple examples. If markup on cost is 40% and the cost is $50, what's the selling price? So here's what I've done. I've, I've created a column for our sales percentage and our column for cost percentage. So our sales percentage, we're going to set sales to be 100%. So this one says if markup on cost or profit on cost is 40% and the cost is 50. So we know our cost is 50. So let's put this in the cost of goods sold category. And we're going to make this cost 100%. For this column, let's make cost 100%. And if the cost is $50 and the markup on cost is 40 then that means we're going to have markup and profit are the same kind of terms, the same kind of idea. So if you, if you think profit, you can think markup or vice versa. So what we'll have is this will be 140%. Should be 140 here. Yes. So this percentage is based on the cost being 100% because it's a markup on cost. So we're going to take the 50 times the 40%. So our markup or our profit is going to be 20. And therefore we say, hey, the 50 plus the profit of 20, we're going to make our sales price 70. So what is our selling price? Our selling price is 70. So that's our answer that we want. And we can do this over here. We can calculate the sales. If the sales are 100%, then 50 divided by the selling price of 70 is 71.4%. And then 20 divided by the original 70 is 28.6%. So in this example, we have markup on cost is 40%. That was given. But what would be the markup on sales? The markup on sales will be that 28.6%. That's the same question in saying, what is the profit on sales? Well, the profit on sales is 28.6%. Let's mark that. So what's the selling price? $70. What's the markup on sales? 28.6. All right, let's flip it and let's give markup on sales is 40% rather than markup on cost. So problem two. So let's say the markup on sales is 40%. Now we know in this case, that's gonna be the 100%. And we're gonna make the 40% the profit. Let's say the sales price is $80. What is the cost per unit? What is the cost per unit? Well, we know that 100, minus the 40% is going to give us 60%, right? So we're trying to figure out what's the cost. So the cost is going to be $80 times 60%. And $80 times the 40% gives us 32. Certainly we could have subtracted 80 minus 48 gives us 32. So if markup on sales is 40% and the sales price is 80%, what's the cost per unit? The cost per unit is the $48. So in this example, let's ask another question. What is the markup on cost? Well, 
what you want to do in the markup on cost is you want to figure out, well, in this case, the cost would be 100% or just simply, you don't have to do all the, the math on it. You can say, well, what is 32 divided by the cost? So markup on cost is profit divided by cost or markup divided by cost. So this is going to be 60 six and two thirds, so 66.7%. And that is our markup on cost. So in this case, the cost would be 100% and the 80 divided by the 48 would be 167% or simply add these two together. So when we do a percent on sales or a, a profit on sales or a markup on sales, sales will be the 100%. When we do a markup or profit on cost, cost will be the 100%. So hope that makes it clear. Now a couple little uh, tips here. The markup on cost percentage is always going to be a larger number than the markup on profit. So in this case, when the markup is 40% for on sales, the markup on cost is 66 and two thirds percent because cost is always the smaller number. So taking 32 divided by 48 gives you 66%. 32 divided by 80 gives you 40%. So just the way the math works and you can think of profit based on your cost or profit based on your selling price either way. And you need to know how to do both directions. Okay, let's get into estimating any in inventory. And to estimate any in inventory, there is the first method we're going to do is called the gross profit method. Now, the gross profit method, sometimes you need to estimate any in, in inventory, or you just want on a particular date to estimate inventory. It may be because your inventory has been stolen or lost or damaged, or you just want a quick estimate. Well, one of the ways to do it is the gross profit method. And here's what you need on the gross profit method. You need the available inventory. You need to know your sales and you need to have an estimate for gross profit margin. So let me put here, this is the estimated gross profit margin. The estimated gross profit margin is what you uh, typically have had over the last several months or last several years. And so that's a number we don't automatically know from our accounting records. We're going to have to estimate. It has been this in the last several years, and we're going to estimate uh, using gross profit. Now, if you change that number, then it changes your estimate a little bit. All right, so let's look at a problem with this information. A company has a fire that destroys its inventory, so we can't count the inventory. We have to estimate. Beginning inventory is 60000 and purchases are 310000 Sales are 420000 and gross profit margin is usually 40%. So we're going to use estimated gross profit margin is 40%. So what is our estimated inventory? Well, we know that sales are 420. I would use these formats, uh, 420,000 rather. So we're going to use we know net sales minus cost of goods sold is gross profit. See, sometimes you're given information in a word problem and you need to put it in a format that you know. So what do we already know? Sales minus cost of goods sold gives you gross profit. And then we know how to calculate cost of goods sold. Beginning inventory plus purchases gives you goods available. Minus ending inventory gives you cost of goods sold. All right, so if our sales are 420000 Let's make our percentages over here, just like we know them. We're saying that our gross profit margin is 40% in this case. So that means our cost of goods sold is going to be 60%. So our cost of goods sold is going to be 420 times 60% or 252,000. And our gross profit, 420 minus 252, is going to be 168,000. Okay, so that's something we, we can kind of back in to figure out because we know our sales and we know our gross profit margin. Now, we also know our beginning inventory is 60,000. 
Our purchases are 310, 310,000. So our goods available are 370,000. We just um, don't know our end inventory, but we just calculated cost of goods sold. So if we say cost of goods sold, we've estimated that to be 252,000. Then our ending inventory is going to be 370 minus the 252, and that's going to be 118,000. So what's our answer? Our answer is our estimated ending inventory is 118,000. We have to have uh, available inventory, we have to have sales, and we have to have estimated gross profit margin. All right, let's do another problem. Change the numbers just a little bit. All right, let's look at problem four. Problem four is going to be we have inventory of 745,000. Now we do not have beginning inventory or purchases, so we're going to drop in 745. We have sales for the year of 850,000, so this is 850,000. We know our sales are 100%, and we're given profit of 48%. This is all we know. So you have to work with a format you know. You can plug in what you know, solve for what you don't know, and you can calculate this. So 100% minus the 48 means our cost of goods sold. Whoops. Our 100 minus the 48 means our cost of goods sold is 52%. So 850,000 times 52% is 442,000. We can subtract out the 850 minus the 442 and get our gross profit. So if we know our cost of goods sold, our cost of goods sold is 442. We can calculate our ending inventory is going to be 745 minus 442, what we think our cost of goods sold would be. And we think our estimated ending inventory is going to be 303,000. 303,000. All right. So the gross profit method, you need to know the goods available, the net sales, and the gross profit, and you can calculate your ending inventory. That's an estimate, uh, but that is a good way to estimate your ending inventory. All right, our third way to estimate, uh, our third point here, our second way to estimate the ending inventory is our retail method. And the retail method, we need to know only the retail price and the cost to estimate the inventory. So we need to know the available inventory at retail prices. We need to know the available inventory at cost. And then we need to know also the sales. From that, that's enough to estimate ending inventory. Now let's think about cost and retail. If we buy something at 50 and we sell it for 80, 50 is the cost, 80 is the retail price. So let's look at problem five. So problem five, a company has the following information. They have sales of 100,000. They have beginning inventory and purchases at cost. They have beginning inventory, they spent 8,000 and they purchased 75,000 more. They're gonna sell it at 12,800 and 120,000. That's the retail prices of those levels of inventory. So let's just plug in what we know and here's what I would do. I would create a little chart just like this. And so the cost, beginning inventory cost, is 8000 The purchases are 75000 And so the total available in terms of the cost is 83000 Now the retail would be 12800 for that beginning inventory, 120000 for the uh, purchases at retail prices. And so what's our total retail uh, of goods available? Well, it's 132,800. So what we bought at 83,000, we're trying to sell at 132,800. Now sales, sales are 100,000. Which column would sales go in? Is sales a cost or is that a retail price? Well, sales is a retail price. So if we set, had sales of 100,000, then that's in the retail column. And so we take the 132,800 minus the 100,000. And we say, hey, 32,800, 32,800 is our ending inventory at retail prices. 
Now, we're trying to figure out this number. What is our ending inventory at our cost? What is the ending inventory at our cost, not the retail prices? But we know the retail price. So what we're going to do, we're going to make an assumption that this relationship, the cost retail, is something we can, we can calculate, and it's pretty consistent across all our items. So we're going to do what's called a cost retail ratio. So cost divided by retail. So we're going to take the, the cost, which is the 83000 divided by the 132800 and that's going to give us a cost retail ratio. So that, I made it a percentage, so it's 62.5%. So the cost retail ratio is 62.5%. If you have an item that's selling at a $100, it costs them, on average, looks like $62.5. Dollars, so sixty-two dollars and fifty cents. So we're going to then convert that retail number to cost by just taking the thirty-two thousand times the sixty-two and a half percent. So I'm going to take the thirty-two thousand times the sixty-two and a half percent, and the answer is the ending inventory at our cost is twenty thousand five hundred. Let's say we had a theft or a fire or a flood or something like that, well, that's how much we've lost. We lost the cost of our ending inventory is 20500 If we, you know, we can estimate this in just about five minutes, and so it takes a long time to count inventory, but we can estimate what our ending inventory is, our cost of ending inventory is really quickly. All right, one more problem on the retail method, and we're finished. So problem six, let's say we have the following information. We have sales of 822000 and we have the cost information, and we have the retail information. All right, so just plug in what we know. We're going to put the 44000 as our beginning inventory cost, 627000 as our purchases, and we're going to add up those totals um, to equal 671,000 is our cost. 62,500, 890,400. The sum at retail prices is 952,900. Our sales, remember, goes in the retail column, 822,000. So our Ending inventory at retail prices is nine fifty two nine hundred minus the eight hundred and twenty two thousand. So we have ending inventory at retail prices of one hundred and thirty thousand nine hundred. Now ending inventory at cost is going to be less than that because remember we need to do the cost retail ratio. So we're going to take the cost divided by the retail prices we're going to get a cost retail ratio. Now, this could be a decimal. I just put it as a percentage, kind of thinking about it. So this number could be many, many decimals. So I'm showing it as a percent. You can show it just as a decimal. If you do, then show it as four decimals so you can calculate that so it's, you don't have, you have less of a rounding error. It's an estimate, but hang on to about four decimals. Uh, you can make it a percent. If you do, then it's not exactly 70%. It is 70.42% or 0 0.7042. So to convert it to retail, from retail to cost, we're going to take the 130,900 times the 70.42%, which is 0 0.7042. You see, I have a calculation here to show you how to do it in case you forget. So let's multiply. So our estimated ending inventory at cost is 92175 All right, that's how you estimate ending inventory and also how to calculate markup on cost and markup on sales price.